pulmonary fibrosis is the commonest cause of interstitial lung disease and the most important clinically. As mentioned already, it's due to an infiltration of the interstitial alveoli with the inflammatory material and increased extracellular matrix and collagen and fibroblasts. This is normally in a bibasal distribution, usually subplural, usually relatively symmetrical, and importantly, pulmonary fibrosis of the idiopathics type is generally a progressive disease. This infiltration of the alveoli in stitching with extra material makes oxygen diffusion from the alveolus into the pulmonary capillary much slower. So uptake of oxygen, as measured by a transfer factor, will be reduced in pulmonary fibrosis. There are multiple underlying causes of pulmonary fibrosis, but idiopathic is by far the commonest. And there really is no idea exactly why these patients develop pulmonary fibrosis. It's commoner in patients who smoke and in patients who have had occupations where there's been dust exposure, suggesting there is some form of environmental insult that underlies why these patients might develop the disease. In the United Kingdom, the instance of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is five people per 100,000. This table describes the differences between the different causes of pulmonary fibrosis. At the top, you have idiopathic disease, which, as we already mentioned, is a bibasal, symmetrical, progressive disease. It tends to affect men. The median age of onset is 70 years. There's a very similar disease, but that's associated with connective tissue diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis, and dermatomyositis. And this is a more even distribution between men and women and, and tends to affect younger patients, but again is a bibasal, symmetrical disease and can be progressive, although overall the prognosis of connective tissue-associated pulmonary fibrosis is much better than idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Then you may get diseases such as end stage of sarcoidosis or hypersensitive pneumonitis where the disease is not by basal distribution but tends to be upper lobe disease. As I've already mentioned, both of those, both sarcoid and hypersensitive pneumonitis may cause pulmonary fibrosis, but this tends to be an upper lobe distribution rather than basal. Then there are some causes of, of pulmonary fibrosis which often start with an acute onset, such as drug toxicity, radiotherapy, and after an episode of adult respiratory distress syndrome. So how does pulmonary fibrosis present? Well, usually it presents with exertional dyspnea. The patient will say, I've been getting breathless and more breathless over the past few weeks or few months. Sometimes the patient may have a cough as well, which is usually dry but can be productive of a clear phlegm. When you talk to the patient and discuss their background history and their social circumstances, you may identify a potential cause for uh, pulmonary fibrosis, such as a history of rheumatoid arthritis, somebody who may be a farmer, could have farmer's lung, one of the forms of hypersensitive pneumonitis, or they could have worked with asbestos in the past and therefore have pulmonary fibrosis due to asbestosis. In addition, they could have had radiotherapy or chemotherapy, and that might be identifiable when you take their drug history and their past medical history. And other questions you may want to ask, and this always is a little unusual when you ask the patients whether they have any pets such as birds or any specific hobbies, because hypersensitive pneumonitis tends to be dictated by exposure during uh, to two pets or, or hobbies or specific occupations. Mm -hmm.